seeing our suddenly sick son. I was completely worn out, both physically and mentally. But my husband coldly said, All you have to do is take care of the house and our child. I only settled for you because I knew you'd put up with affairs. He said this without any regard for our sick son. Stunned, I watched him take a sip from his second beer. My name's Ruby, and I'm 33. I met my current husband, Nolan, who's eight years older than me, through a dating service about four years ago. He's at the top of his profession, and even though he's a little arrogant, he was the assertive one with my more reserved personality. I quickly fell for his confidence. He always complimented my humble nature, and once we moved in together, I did my best to live up to his standards. After dating for a year, he popped the question, and naturally, I accepted. He once said to me, I'll handle the finances, so I want you to manage our home. Wanting to respect his wishes, I left my job. After a big wedding, he moved into my apartment. From then on, I focused on taking care of things around the house and taking care of him, using my spare moments for personal interests. My family was thrilled for us, and my friends were a bit jealous. To anyone looking in, my husband appeared flawless. A prosperous guy with good looks. And we had an adorable son named Liam. It seemed like we had the ideal marriage. But then, after making dinner one night, I got a text from him. I'll be home late. I don't need dinner. Just uh, make sure to draw a bath and have some snacks ready for me. All I could do was sigh. The honeymoon phase dimmed after our first anniversary. He was ecstatic when Liam was born, but soon after he began to pull away, saying his job kept him too occupied to pitch in with raising our son. Whenever I asked for a hand, he'd retort. Do you really expect someone who's been working all day to come home and do housework? And then he'd storm out. As time went on, his late nights became frequent, often coming home tipsy. And sometimes I'd catch a whiff of a scent that wasn't mine. Handling our son became more challenging, leaving me tired and stretched thin. Yet, he wanted the same level of attention as before Liam came along. One time, I fell asleep with our son and didn't hear him come in. He woke me, saying, Must be nice, just lounging all day without doing your job. His biting words and icy look stunned me. The following morning, I saw off my irritated husband and continued my daily routine, waiting for his return. But that evening, he got home early and mentioned divorce. If you're unhappy, then apologize from the bottom of your heart. Prove you mean it. Thinking about Liam, I believed he shouldn't be without his dad. So I held back my tears and said, I'm sorry. That evening, I shed more tears than I ever thought possible. Reflecting on it, the comfort of my sleeping son was the only thing that kept me grounded. As I redoubled my efforts to please my husband and look after our child, his late night escapades persisted. If you're not happy, we can just split. He'd often remind me. When I thought I'd adjusted to this new norm, the fatigue from housework and parenting overcame me, and I 
unintentionally dozed off next to Liam. I was startled, awake, by his piercing cry. What's the matter, Liam? I scooped him up and felt his hot skin, and immediately took him to the hospital. Thankfully, they found nothing serious, but given his age, they suggested he stay overnight. The nurse said I could head home to gather a few things while they kept an eye on him. I was reluctant to bother my husband at his job, but I finally called him. But he didn't answer. I left him a voicemail, grabbed what I needed, left a note at the house, and sped back to the hospital. Liam stayed close to me, all fussy, the entire day, and only drifted off after 11 p.m. They did prepare me a small bed next to his, but I couldn't rest, let alone use the bathroom. I couldn't really eat anything either. As I was sipping on some hot cocoa from a vending machine, my phone buzzed. It was my husband. Hey there, you must be worn out from... He interrupted. Where in the world are you? His sharp tone made me shudder. I'm at the hospital now. I left you a note. Liam needs some tests, so we're staying here overnight. What about my dinner? Seriously? You're worried about your dinner? I tried to keep my voice down to avoid waking Liam, who finally dozed off. Keeping my cool, I said, Didn't you get my message? I couldn't cook tonight. There's a ready-to-eat food in the fridge and bread for the morning. You've got the car. You can grab something outside, right? Could you handle your own dinner for tonight? Haven't you heard the saying, a man shouldn't be in the kitchen? What kind of wife expects her worn-out husband to cook after a long day? You don't need to be at the hospital. Just come home. I heard the sound of a beer can popping open in the background. For all his talk, he had no issue going to the kitchen for a drink. Not a peep about our son. And he wasn't coming to get me either. I felt anger boiling inside as I heard him kick off his nightly drinking routine. You want me to leave our son, who's not even a year old, alone here? It's still a hospital, even if it's just tests. Doesn't it bother you? My voice went higher than I intended and he tisked in annoyance. Really? Getting brave because I can't see you? Keep acting like this, and I'll fall for a divorce. How do you think you'll manage on your own in this economy, with your background and education? It's your job to take care of the home, and our kid. This happened because you're slacking off. Oh, not this again. Lately, he's been tossing around the word divorce way too often. You always bring up divorce when we fight. How do you really feel about us? I couldn't hold back. Balancing childcare and home duties has always been challenging. But I hung in there, believing he truly cared about our family. I overlooked his late hours and nights out, thinking he was doing it for us. Then I heard another beer can open on his side. Right after he took a swig, he blew up. Are you kidding me? Who do you think pays the bills here? Give me a break. What? Answering back? Your only job should be taking care of the house and our child. Then you're done for. Excuse me? Women start losing their charm after 30. I won't stay with someone who's past their prime. It's only natural for a guy 
to want someone younger. I only settled for you because I knew you'd put up with affairs. What? I was speechless. His biting remarks, not entirely because of the booze, left me stunned. Then I heard him laugh, mockingly. I don't want to be shackled to a family. I've had enough to drink, and I'm not hungry. I'm heading to bed. I'll be out tomorrow, so don't call and bother me, okay? If you want to keep this marriage, think about where you stand here. Remember who's putting food on the table. Then he just hung up on me. Something in me broke. All of a sudden, everything felt unreal. Seeing that he only viewed our marriage and child as conveniences, all the love I felt for him disappeared. My sadness quickly turned to rage. I couldn't let it slide that he didn't value our own son. I wasn't the docile wife he thought he knew. I was set on making him regret taking a mother for granted. The following day, while Liam was getting his tests, I reached out to a private investigator. A couple of days later, with Liam thankfully in the clear, we headed home. Predictably, my husband wasn't there for us and didn't react to my update about Liam's condition. He eventually got home at the crack of dawn, clearly drunk. I greeted him at the door, saying softly, I've thought about where I stand. Fine. I won't hold it against you this time. Consider yourself lucky. He snorted, making a beeline for the bedroom, leaving a trail of clothes behind. When I picked up his shirt, I noticed what looked like makeup glitter. Suit yourself. Looking at the man, now just another middle-aged guy, I started planning my next steps. A month had rolled by since then. I was jolted awake by the insistent ringing of the doorbell early in the morning. Come on, open up. Why won't my key work? Your husband is back. It sounded like Nolan was back from his three-day trip. I'd anticipated him returning tonight, but he came back this morning instead. I had my suspicions about it being an actual business trip, but at this point it was irrelevant. Squinting through my sleepiness, I called his number. Do you mind? It's early, and you're bugging the neighbors. The key's not working. Did Liam mess with it? This is what happens when you're not paying attention. The lock isn't broken. What? That doesn't make sense. I swapped out the locks while you were away. You did what? Peering out from the upstairs window, I could see him standing there, looking completely lost. What on earth did you do? without asking me. Who do you think runs this house? I'll divorce you. If you don't want that, then just unlock the door. Oh, I've taken care of that. Taken care of what? The divorce. I filed the papers. We're officially strangers now. Hold on. What are you talking about? I never signed any paperwork. I see what you did. You filled it out yourself, huh? That's illegal, and it won't hold up in court. I couldn't help but smirk at his overconfident expression. You've forgotten, haven't you? Remember the time you first mentioned divorce? You brought home a filled out form. What are you talking about? That's right. On that heart-wrenching day, he'd come home with a pre-filled divorce form. After my apology, he crumpled it and chucked it at me. I thought you threw it out. I kept it, thinking it might come in handy. In hindsight, I guess, I always sensed this day would come. 
As I reminisced, he looked visibly shaken, mouth wide open. What about this house? And our expenses? How do you expect to live, being a stay-at-home mom? Oh, this is so sad. Our young son's going to suffer because of your impulsive choices. Get it straight. Remember, this house came from my grandparents, making me the legal owner. You were just living here. And regarding finances, I landed a job. You're making that up. You couldn't have found a job in this short time. I've been painting in my free time. He always told me not to go to bed before you, so I painted while waiting up for you. After posting my art online, a publisher got interested. Seriously? How is that even possible? Maybe you're getting duped. Artists going viral isn't unheard of nowadays. It's a well-known publisher. Hearing the name of the publishing house, he looked shell-shocked, murmuring, Is this even real? It felt refreshing to hear him talk without the usual sarcasm or shouting. Yeah, I'm all set for now. And on top of that... What now? There's the spousal support you'll be paying. Say what now? I opened the window and tossed him the photos I got from the PI. I hired a private investigator. If it was just about you hitting the clubs, I might have let it slide. But you were involved with one of the girls. When I contacted her workplace and the ladies realized they weren't getting sued, he quickly sided with me. He frantically scooped up the photos, his face going as white as a sheet. I can't blame him. The pictures clearly displayed him with a younger woman, clearly from the nightlife scene, heading into a shady establishment. Here's more for you. What? Next, I showed him screenshots of his messages, clear evidence of how he'd neglected me and our son. As morning broke, people began starting their day. Given the pictures and messages, he doesn't have much ground to stand on. I've been keeping tabs on all your actions and words. I'll hand all this over to my lawyer. You can keep those photos. I've got everything backed up. A P.I.? A lawyer? You think you're pulling this off with my money? It's from my savings before our marriage. Not sure why you'd have a problem with that. I shot back. And he stared at me, holding back his anger. Since our wedding, I'd been saving money because he wanted me to be thrifty. So I rarely splurged on myself, leaving most of my savings intact. Honestly, I was taken aback by how much I had stashed away. I should have taken action earlier. I'm upset on my past self for being so submissive. Perhaps concerned about nosy neighbors, he tried to smile, saying softly, All right, I understand. I'm sorry. Just let me in. We're still married, right? No longer. Check the mailbox. He promptly checked the mailbox and took out an envelope, inspecting it. Inside, there's a key to a storage unit and its location. Everything you own, all purchased with your earnings since we got married, is stored there. The car is yours too. Now, kindly disappear. I was thankful he never contributed to household chores. It meant I knew where all his belongings were. He probably didn't even know how many shirts he owned. I can't live without you. His sudden desperation left me unfazed. I'm fine on my own. Besides, you said I was done for. You're not tied to a fading rose and its seed, are you? Maybe find a younger woman to look after you? Hold on, listen. Moving forward, talk to my attorney. If you linger, I won't hesitate to call the cops. Goodbye. 
I ended the call, locked all the windows, and shut the blinds. For some time, he incessantly buzzed the doorbell and tried the door. I ignored his barrage of I'm sorry texts. When the neighbors started gossiping about his antics, he quickly jumped into his car and left. Later on, I got word from his folks. Turns out, he'd blown all his personal funds from his single days on nightlife and ended up begging his parents for help. After I laid out the whole story for them, backed by evidence, they gave me an envelope a few days later, holding the full alimony they paid for him. I learned he'd been diverting company money for his leisure activities, given his senior position. Once I blew the whistle, he got blacklisted from those venues. His abrupt shift in spending habits raised red flags at his job. While he wasn't fired, he was moved to a smaller role in a distant office. Now, he's holed up in a budget apartment. Considering he'd never done any housework, I shudder to think about the state of his place. But I don't feel sorry for him. He made his bed. Meanwhile, after selling the house and filling in my folks, I moved back home and became an illustrator while also working a side gig at a grocery store. It's not a lavish lifestyle, but I can buy what I want when I wish. My parents have been a rock, and best of all, my son has been thriving with no significant health issues. Recently, he's even expressed a desire to pitch in which fills me with joy. Even without a dad in the picture, I've promised myself, pointing to where my wedding ring used to be, to be both parents and guarantee my son's happiness. Mom, I got a weird text from dad. My daughter approached me, a worried expression evident. My husband was out of town on business. And while he had said to reach out, if anything came up, I was puzzled about why he'd message our daughter. Intrigued, I glanced at the text, and the accompanying photo left me stunned. Beneath the image was a remark from my husband, teasingly predicting my reaction. It's a picture from yesterday, baby. I'll be at the hotel again today. In a fury, I left the house to meet someone. From that moment on, my husband was in for a tough time. I'm Sandra, and I'm 32 years old. I have a corporate job as an executive secretary, and I'm also a stay-at-home mom. My husband, Tony, also works in an office setting and is on the fast track because of his outstanding contributions. Our daughter, Stacy, is a first grader. She's a bit of a handful at times, but overall, she's turning out to be a sweet kid. Life seems pretty good with a steady job, a successful husband, and an adorable daughter. To outsiders, it might seem like I'm living the dream, but behind closed doors, we had a problem. Tony had this habit of making offhand remarks to both our daughter and me. What's more, he genuinely thought he was being helpful. Tony and I originally met in a college group. I first saw him as this good-looking guy who always looked put together, but then I wasn't really into him. I just thought it was cool having a handsome guy in the group. At a group outing, I had a bit too much to drink and felt sick. Amid the party's chaos, I was hesitant to step away. That's when he gracefully escorted me outside. When I expressed my gratitude, he just smiled and said, Don't worry about it. After that, I started seeing him in a different light. Eventually, I plucked up the courage to swap contact info and he was on board. Things clicked. I shared how I felt, and we started going out. We stuck together even after college. 
We got married when I was 25. Life as a married couple was smooth. And many even said, we seemed like the ideal pair. I felt on top of the world. But as time went on, I began to see things differently. He was no help around the house. We'd talked about splitting chores since we both had jobs. But he'd always come up with reasons, saying he forgot or was swamped at work. Tony, why are the dishes and laundry still here? You said you'd handle them the other day when work got busy. And I even swapped tasks with you. No matter how much I called him out, it didn't seem to matter. His apologies always seemed insincere. I honestly forgot. I'm beat today. So can you take care of the chores? I swear I'll remember next time. But he never followed through. Even worse, he'd ask for personal favors while deep into his games on his smartphone. Casually saying things like, Make me some coffee. Or, Get my clothes ready. Once after I'd made pork chops, he said, Actually, I was in the mood for steak. I'll pass on the pork chops. Whip up something different? I was so ticked off, I could have thrown something at him hard. Most of the time, I wound up doing all the household chores myself. I never thought he could be this thoughtless. In the midst of these trying times, we welcomed our daughter, Stacy. I held on to some hope. Perhaps, with a kid, he'd grow up a bit and step up. But I was wrong. Childcare was left to me. Sure, if I asked for help, he'd do it. But he clearly wasn't thrilled. Once I overheard him say, Well, you are her mom. It was as if he thought raising our child was solely my duty. Isn't raising a child a shared responsibility? Why doesn't he get that? Whenever I'd ask him to change diapers or give her a bottle, he'd do it, but begrudgingly. If she got even slightly fussy, he'd hand her right back, saying it was too much for him. When I needed him to watch her while I cooked, he'd just hang back, engrossed in his phone. At worst, he'd just let her zone out with an iPad. And that was it. When bedtime rolled around, or when I asked for a ride, he'd pass, saying he was wiped out. On nights, when she was particularly fussy, he'd go to another room to avoid the noise. And weekends? While I balanced house chores and parenting, he'd sleep in, play on his phone, and just veg out on the couch, oblivious to our crying child. He left all the tough stuff to me, but wanted the fun parts. Like when she was about a year old, and acting out, I had to lay down the law. Of course, she cried, but I believed it was for the best. Seeing this, Tony nonchalantly said, Wasn't that a bit much? She's just a kid. Kids will be kids. I think you're going overboard. As her mom, shouldn't you be more understanding? I can't even begin to describe how I felt then. I never wanted to be the bad guy with my daughter. Even though I had tough moments with her, it was all because I cared about her future. What could he possibly know? Always taking the path of least resistance and barely participating in parenting. Throughout Stacy's younger years, I held back from confronting him in front of her. But when she turned four, his attitude shifted. He started dishing out 
unasked for advice on her upbringing. I found out it was due to a TV show where a famous person's dad was talking about his parenting choices. The father said, I enrolled my child in many activities to develop her talents. Inspired by this, Tony suddenly wanted to emulate that dad. Honestly, it seemed ludicrous to me. Sure, that celebrity might have refined some skills through classes, but their success was mostly their own making. No matter how many lessons you push on a kid, it's pointless if they're not into it. I want Stacy to have a carefree childhood. But Tony, ignoring my opinion, enrolled her in a ton of classes, piano, swimming, and ballet. And he did this without even asking me. Naturally, our little girl was overwhelmed with all this stuff when she just wanted to have fun, leading to more meltdowns. While she did enjoy swimming, she wasn't into piano or ballet. So I let her stick with swimming and pulled her out of the other two. But when he griped, saying, Why'd you pull her from piano and ballet? If she ever goes into entertainment, she'll need those skills. You're depriving her of possibilities. If you cared, you'd have kept her in those classes. His nerve was something else. I couldn't even begin to find words that described how irritated I was at him. Our daughter never expressed interest in entertainment or showbiz. Why push these lessons on her? Later, I told him straight. I took her out because she didn't want to continue. She's only four. Playtime with friends is more important than endless lessons for her right now. Don't drag her into your fantasies. I'm thinking of her future too. Stop making me out to be the bad guy. She didn't sign up for this. If she doesn't want these classes, I'll pull her out. Count on it. He still looked pretty annoyed. Still, he went behind my back, enrolling her in gymnastics, French, and karate, but I pulled her out when she expressed disinterest. I wished he'd stop the cycle, but he kept it up. Then, when she turned six, he wanted her in a computer class, a half hour drive away. By this point, I was working and couldn't manage the pickups and drop-offs. Despite me telling him this, Tony still signed her up. To make matters worse, he lied to my mom, telling her we both agreed on it, and asked her to do the driving. My mom, ever the sweetheart, said, Kids should learn all they can, I've got this. Which made me feel even worse. But to my surprise, the computer class worked out, and Stacy liked it. Just when I thought we were on even ground, he said, This is the digital age. Let's get Stacy a smartphone. She's getting the hang of the internet with her class. I was dead set against this. A smartphone for a first grader seemed way too early. I kept thinking about those online incidents involving young kids I'd heard about on the news. The idea of her... Getting caught up in something scary was too much. Still, over my objections, Tony took her to a store and got her a smartphone using our shared savings. He said he'd teach her how to use it, but whenever she had a question, he'd just brush her off with, Ask your mom. This all culminated in a big blowout, me yelling, I've had it. We only cooled down when Stacy started crying, but I was still seething. I even considered divorce, but thinking about our daughter kept me in check. A bit later, Tony was set to leave 
on a business trip for several days. He seemed oddly upbeat about it, which got me wondering. And then the next day, something totally unexpected happened. As I was prepping dinner, Stacy walked up, looking troubled. Mom, can you come here for a sec? I got a text from Dad. From Dad? What did he say? I don't really get it. There's a picture attached. Her face gave away her confusion. Why does she look so upset? It all made sense when I saw the image. My husband had sent a picture to our daughter, and it was definitely inappropriate. The photo was of a woman in just her underwear, wearing his jacket. I was dumbfounded. Under the photo was a message. This was from yesterday, baby. I'll be at that hotel again today. He even mentioned the room number. Everything fell into place. He wasn't on a business trip. He was having a fling. And accidentally texted our daughter. I was livid. If my daughter hadn't been right there, I would have gone ballistic. I tried to calm her. It's okay, sweetie. I've got this. But inside, I was plotting. That jerk is going to regret this big time. After leaving Stacy with my mom, I headed to that hotel with some backup. When I got to his room and rang the bell, an overly cheerful Tony, just in his boxers, opened the door. Lisa, you're late. Wait, what? His face went pale when he saw me. And even more so when he spotted who was with me. Tony? Care to explain? B ben? I thought you took time off for your, your sick daughter? The person I brought was my dad. As it turns out, Tony worked for my dad's business. The condo we lived in? Dad's name was on it. I chose to work elsewhere to be independent from family ties, so I had no clue Tony was on leave. My dad and I stepped inside, and I laid out why we were there. Grasping the gravity of his mistake, he looked crushed. My dad grilled him, and he came clean. He had started using a dating app after we had some disagreements, and got wrapped up with a younger woman from there. The woman in the photo was named Lisa, seven years his junior. I firmly told him we were done, and that I wanted out. My dad laid into him about what he could expect next. Freaking out, Tony pleaded. Oh, I'm sorry, oh, I messed up. You're the only one for me, Sandra. I'll never stray again. Please. Give me another chance. I was beyond disgusted. The cheating? I could almost move past that. I was almost grateful for him for giving me the reason for getting a divorce. But that photo sent to our kid? No way. Are you kidding me? You think I'll stay with someone who does something so sleazy? This isn't a good environment for our daughter. I don't want her around you. No, don't keep her from me. I swear I'll step up, even with chores. I want to be there for her. You can't even be a dad without messing up, and now you've gone and cheated? Save it. You're the lowest of the low. How could you send that disgusting picture to our daughter, for God's sake? Gear up for a divorce. Embrace yourself for what you owe me. He was a mess, but I felt nothing. Later on, I divorced Tony, got a fair deal, and naturally got custody. We struck a deal, no child support in exchange for him staying away from Stacy. She was actually relieved, tired of his constant badgering about after-school activities. My dad, of course, let him go from the company, where it is, even his folks cut ties after learning about his affair. No one's heard from him since. 
without the boost from being married to me, he couldn't get a job. But that's not my concern now. My daughter Stacy is living her best life, free from being overloaded with classes. I'm not certain what she aspires to be, but whatever she chooses, I'll have her back.